And I think it's interesting how these African traditions have blended with the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Uh, as I understand it, basically the, the various deities, the Orishas, gods mm -hmm. and goddesses, mm -hmm. uh, loosely translated, mm -hmm. I, I suppose, or, or Loas mm -hmm. uh, is another term, are equated uh, or have become merged in some way with the saints of, yes. of the Catholic tradition. Yes. Well, you know, the black codes, um, which rule the conduct of both uh, slave and slave owner, uh, dictated that people coming over be immediately converted to Christianity. And there was an attempt to keep people from practicing their traditional ways. But you have to look at the fact that uh, the Catholic Church had already absorbed the uh, deities of European paganism. You know, the, god, the goddess Bridget became Saint Bridget, mm -hmm. you see. And um, the ways of the European pagans had been absorbed by that church. So when African people were brought here and were told <laughs> that they, they could not <coughs> practice their own tradition, mm -hmm. we had a rich body of folklore. And the rich folklore of, of the Catholic Church was in the lives of the saints, yeah. you see. So we um, made parallels between the stories so that the Lord of Thunder and Lightning became associated with Santa Barbara because of the stories of, of her being locked in a tower and, you know, and the person who offended her being struck by lightning. And we did that mm -hmm. with every one of them because under, under the black codes, you could be killed for practicing your own tradition. But if you were found down by the riverside with a statue of the Virgin Mary, you know, then it was thought that you would be in um, a good Christian. And over the generations, the similarities between the two were drawn closer mm -hmm. and closer and closer so that you have mm -hmm. uh, the Santeria tradition, mm -hmm. which has um, locked both of them. In Brazil, we have, we have the phenomena that I call beneath Mary's skirts, you know, where uh, on the altar, on the top of the altar, you see all the Christian symbolism, and there's a silk skirt around the altar table. Mm -hmm. And if you lift it up, all the African symbols yeah. are underneath. Yeah, and Brazil is an interesting co country in this regard because mm -hmm. it's nominally a Catholic country. Nominally. And my sense is that probably most of the people of Brazil practice one form or another yes. of, of the a spiritism. Or yeah, the spiritism, candomblé, candomblé macumba. Uh, Umbanda, Kardec, uh, Spiritism. And one of the jokes that's, uh, that's said by Brazilians a lot is that everybody practices the tradition in one way or another. Some people practice it by practicing mm -hmm. it and other people practice it by fearing it, you know. <laughs> so you, mm -hmm. you will hear people say, well, I'm not in that tradition, yeah. but you could not get those same people mm -hmm to disrupt a ceremony, for example, or to touch an offering that's been mm -hmm. left. And um, the beliefs of the tradition are in the music, are in the food, are in the folklore, are in the clothing, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the restaurants are named mm -hmm. after, after the various deities. So the culture's saturated. Mm -hmm. The culture's saturated yeah. with well, it. You referred earlier to the Christian, or, or um, to the European pagan mm -hmm. traditions, and mm -hmm. actually uh, my sense is that they're very similar, uh, even the Hebrew Kabbalistic tradition mm -hmm. is very similar, because all of these traditions are fundamentally grounded in the reality, reality. of the um, polyphrenic psyche yes. that we all have with its many yes. chords and, and qualities. Yes, existence <laughs> is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it really is. Uh, one of the things I tell my students is it doesn't matter what country you come from or what language you speak. If I give you a picture of a woman holding a newborn baby, 
we all get the same message. Some of us will say Yemaya and Shango. Some of us will say Isis and Osiris. Some of us will say Mary and, and Jesus. But we all know that there is the universal law that the mother and the child, you know, are an incredible phenomenon of mm -hmm. nature. The fact of birth, you know, mm -hmm. and of creation through the mother, mm -hmm. everybody understands that. Well, one of the unique features of Christianity, which has become such a world force, is that it has taken the good and the evil mm -hmm. aspects of nature and separated them out into opposite polarities. You have Christ here, yeah. you have Satan there, and when the, the Christians of um, medieval times and, and even more modern times looked at other traditions that didn't do that, pagan right. traditions, right. Um, in the Jewish tradition, right. and, uh, they projected out and saw yes. this is evil. And, yes. and so when you say we, we fear the African traditions, yes. there's, there's part of it is because it's being seen, I think, with the distorted lens yes. of, of, of a kind of diabolic or yeah. demonic projection. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that's, a, that's a problem everywhere. Most people, most peoples who are, you know, I've, I've started using the phrase primal life people to mean people who still live very close to the earth, people who live in the rainforest, people who never uh, uh, drop those traditions, and those of us who have been urbanized and secularized who are trying to come back to it, I've started calling us ecocentrics, you mm -hmm. know, because the mm -hmm. old uh, phrases of primitive has no meaning, that negative meaning of, of people who don't know anything or mm -hmm. who don't do anything or who are wild, crazy, evil. All of that is crap, mm -hmm. actually. And um, what, what we find is that when people live closer to nature, that, that heavy separation, that long separation of good and evil has no validity. You know, rain in proportion is good. Too much of it is evil. Sun in proportion is good. Too much of it is evil, mm -hmm. right? You know, giving in proportion is good. Too much of it is no good. So we, we in our tradition, did not ever have a <laughs> devil. I need to say that real clear. Mm -hmm. We never, ever had a devil. What we had was a trickster who represent the dynamics of chaos and order, okay? And who was responsible for creating both chaos and order. His name is, one of his names is Alegba. And so when you had um, missionaries coming in and, and uh, they were told, if what we call an accident happens, this is the work of Alegba. Okay, that which is impossible, absurd, irregular, uh, is the work of Alegba. They called him the devil. Okay, I say that Alegba is obeying a law that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. You know, there is something in nature that we have not comprehended that Alegba knows, but we have never had an all powerful devil. Everything is composed of day and night, you know, and the medicine is in finding right relationship, mm -hmm. you know, to, uh, to action and inaction, yeah. to the uh, leg by stands in the crossroads between the visible and the mm -hmm. invisible between uh, the potential and the actual, between order and chaos, yes. and, and <coughs> is in the center of the mm -hmm. cycles that keep life mm -hmm. going, you know. So that judgment doesn't make sense mm -hmm. uh, if you really look at how nature works, mm -hmm. and these traditions are based on how nature works. Mm -hmm.